I've been testing Canon's latest DSLR camera for a couple of weeks. It takes great photos, but is the video mode any good? Stick around. Hi, Paul here from Photo Genius. Now, if you're like me, you love photography, then you're in the right place because on this channel, I post weekly videos and share tips on how to take great photos. Tips, tricks, tutorials, and occasional gear reviews like this one. So please consider subscribing. This video is being recorded on the brand new Canon Rebel SL3 DSLR camera, also known as the 200D Mark II or the 250D, depending on which part of the world you're from. It's a camera I've had on loan for a couple of weeks from Canon Australia, and I've had lots of fun with this camera. I've also done a separate review just on this camera. I ventured out, took photos of moving subjects. I took photos at night, and it's definitely a video you should be checking out if you are interested in finding out more about this camera. I'll put a link up here. But in this short video, I wanna concentrate more on the video features of the camera. Now, generally I record all my videos using the Canon 80D. Um, it's a great camera, I've had it for a couple of years. It's got some great features. Now, this camera has much better build quality than the new SL3. Uh, it's more expensive than the new camera, and it's got some additional features that the new camera doesn't have. But has this camera got some serious competition now with the release of the new Canon SL3 200D Mark II? See, the new camera has inherited some of the key functions that make the 80D such a great camera. Plus, the new camera is much lighter and more compact than this camera, which is gonna make it particularly appealing to people that wanna travel or maybe do vlogging. Now, in a moment, we'll take a look at some footage that I've recorded with this brand new camera. But before that, let me show you just how easy it is to use the video functions on the brand new Canon Rebel SL3. With the video mode selected, we can easily change settings by pressing the Q button on the rear of the camera or the screen because this camera offers LCD touchscreen. Press Q and now you'll see the display shows a column of features on the left and the right hand sides of the screen. Starting with zone focus first, if we press the back symbol, you can clearly see now the autofocus area, which can easily be moved around using the touch LCD. Pressing Q again, we can select the next option, which is one point autofocus, and you will see that the focus area is now smaller. Again, very easy to move around. The spot autofocus mode is ideal for specific focusing on a small area or specific subject. But my favorite here is face tracking mode, which I use all the time for my YouTube videos. From here, you can also enable or disable eye detection. Next up is image quality where you can select from 4K, Full HD or HD. I've been mostly shooting at Full HD at 50 frames per second. Image stabilization is next, which I have actually turned off because it does crop the image size. Moving over to the right of the screen, we have the white balance options. These will affect the colors. So you choose the option based on whatever type of light you are shooting under. I generally find automatic white balance works really well. Below that we find picture styles, again affecting colors. There's a few good options here. I particularly like the monochrome, which enables you to record video in black and white. And finally, the auto light optimizer. Look, I generally turn this off and that's because I'm shooting using the manual camera modes. To start recording a video, you simply press the record button on the back of the camera and press the button again to stop recording. And pressing the playback button allows us to review our video.
Now most of what you just saw was recorded at full HD, but there was also a bit of 4K footage thrown in as well. And I particularly wanna spend a few moments now just talking about the 4K mode on the brand new camera. Now whilst it's great that the Canon SL3 can shoot in 4K, there is a sacrifice when you use this mode. When you turn 4K shooting on, your image will sadly be cropped. That means that your subject will appear much closer and it's a bit like zooming in with your lens. Now, of course, I would much rather when we shoot 4K for the image not to be cropped, but to be honest, when using the camera, I got pretty used to it. It didn't bomb me too much. And a simple solution is you can take a few steps back or alternatively, you could try using a wider lens. Now, of course, everybody wants great looking footage. 4K is amazing, particularly when viewed on a large 4K screen. So the addition of 4K in the new Canon SL3 is a bit of a selling point for Canon. However, as somebody that posts videos pretty regularly on YouTube, I never shoot in 4K. Full HD is more than good enough. Most people these days view videos on mobile devices, smartphones and iPads, where to be honest, generally, you don't see the benefits of 4K. Now let's talk audio quality. Now it is essential that we get great audio when recording videos. And good news is the SL3 has an external mic input. And this means that you can plug in an external mic like this Video Pro from Rode. Now for today's video on the top of the SL3, I'm using a Rode Wireless Go, which is a wireless system. Transmitter sits on the top of the camera. The receiver is in my pocket and this is connected to a, what's called a lav mic, which is sitting just here. Okay, what I've done now is I've unplugged the external mic. So what you're hearing now is the audio quality from the microphone that's actually built into the camera. And as you can hear, it's not ideal. So let's plug the external mic back in. Now the poor quality audio you just heard is typical of what you would expect with a built-in microphone on most cameras, to be honest, not just the SL3, which is why you often see people walking around with a setup like this. So on the new camera, having the option of plugging in an external microphone to the SL3 is another of the reasons why I really like this new camera. So to sum up, is Canon's latest DSLR camera a great camera for video? Absolutely. The video quality is really, really good. It's an easy to use camera. Uh, the dual pixel autofocus is superb. The eye detection is really the icing on the cake in that respect. 4K video thrown in and also the ability to plug in an external mic. This camera gets a big thumbs up from me. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss out on future videos. You can leave your questions and comments down below and I hope to see you again sometime soon. See ya.